More than 200 filmmakers, more than 30 speakers, a pitch competition, and more. We're going to be discussing the In Motion Filmmaking Conference next on City Corner. I'm Sarah Thompson and welcome to City Corner. You've just seen a great promo introduction to the In Motion Filmmaking Conference, which is coming up on November 2nd. And we're going to get into all the details today with the conference's director, Dan Paris, a very familiar face around STL TV. And it's great to have you. You're like celebrity coming back to the uh, studio. I don't know about all so. that. I, uh, I had my first internship here in 2005. Yes, well, you're a very beloved person here and it's always great to see you. And here we are talking about this filmmaking conference. And I want to get into to all the details so people know what to expect, who some of the speakers are. But before I do that, I know that you and your colleagues and your nonprofit that you co-founded are really champions for diversity in filmmaking and in production, uh, you know, nationally, but obviously right here in St. Louis. And I kind of wanted to just start off with that a bit more, which is kind of in the discussion of this, which is ongoing, like what are we getting right and what are we getting wrong when we talk about diversity in filmmaking and in production? Well, I guess it's interesting then cut to a wide guy to talk about the <laughs> right, importance right. of diversity. But I think that's also um, that place I feel is a special place to see that and to enter into conversations and to look out at film sets and who's on the websites at different companies and realize, well, wow, most people look like me. And what stories are we missing out on that we don't have more diverse um, people racially, gender, backgrounds, culturally, all these different things. What kind of stories are we missing out on? And St. Louis is a very diverse place. We have a lot of uh, great things about our city, but a lot of tough things about our city too. And I think both those stories should be told um, from different vantage points. And so we did a research study and we found that less than 2% of the production companies in St. Louis, uh, the commercial production companies, were hiring African Americans. Uh, while that is, you know, almost half of the city of St. Louis and 18% of the metro area. And so we saw there was a real gap there. And so we, we started this program. It's a 36 week training program to train adults who are underrepresented in the film industry to go through this program. And we try to plug them into opportunities in the industry. Mm -hmm. And I want to put this all into context because the proceeds from this filmmaking conference, which is for professionals, novices, for everyone to come to, do go to Continuity, which is your nonprofit organization that really works for diversity. So we can dig into this a bit more. Maybe let's now kind of segue into this conference that's coming up in just uh, just a few weeks. What can we expect? We started off saying 200 filmmakers all in one place. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. We're uh, it's expecting to be you know the premier filmmaking conference in the Midwest. It's going to happen in downtown St. Louis on November 2nd at Covo. It's a co-working space. And so we will have uh, both the first floor and the third floor. We will have breakout sessions, uh, keynote sessions, networking events, a happy hour, like you mentioned. And so we're doing a lot of uh, reaching out to different filmmakers across the area. And there's a lot of interest and passion in, in what we're doing. And it's the first of its kind. It's our first year doing this. And um, one thing to kind of connect it back to continuity is that we came up with this idea because we had a gap in our fundraising. Some of our mm -hmm. funders weren't able to fund us this year for whatever reason and will hopefully come back in future years. So we said, how are we going to fill this gap? And we came up with this idea of a conference because our mission is skills-based training, mentorship, and opportunities. And this conference is all about skills-based training, about connecting with other people who could potentially be a mentor, and about providing opportunities. So 
uh, it's just a perfect fit, and it's become a great way to try to both accomplish our mission and raise money for the nonprofit. Absolutely, and get get your name for there out there for continuity's name as well. So let's get into this. We've got 30 speakers. Uh, we do have <laughs> we couldn't put photos of every 30 speakers, but uh, we've got some a good lineup that you have. Um, let's maybe take a look at some of the ones that great. we do have. Yeah, all right, totally. This is uh, Alvaro Aro. He works at Spot Media. He's a really talented director of photography. Okay, and so he's going to, and we'll kind of get into. And he's going to speak about production quality on our Breakout 1A. And so, you know, how can you take your production quality to the next level? I mean, that's one way to get our work noticed is it needs to be excellent. Ben Scholey, he uh, used to be the head of the Lindenwood Film Department, and he just made a documentary recently, very talented director, and he's going to talk about documentary filmmaking and uh, how he made his film. This is Bobby Herrera. Bobby's very talented, does a lot of different things. Uh, just produced a feature length film on his rooftop and it's been distributed nationally and also worked on a reality show that's gotten over 35 million views on YouTube and almost got picked up by Snapchat. Really? Yeah, yeah. so he's gonna be talking about that. This is Brittany Janae. She is a filmmaker from St. Louis, now lives in LA, has worked with Snoop Dogg, Common, and a lot of other folks as a, both a director and editor. Very cool. This is Damon Davis. He's pretty well known in St. Louis as both a fine artist but also a filmmaker now. He co-directed Who Streets, which premiered at Sundance and was picked up by Magnolia and distributed internationally. So he'll be speaking on our documentary panel. And this is David Kirkman. And David is a, a local filmmaker who made a film for $3,000 that ended up having over a million views on YouTube. And he was invited to show his film in Netflix. And so David's doing some huge things, making um, a variety of different fiction work. Very talented young man. And this is Stephanie Toby. She, uh, her film, Abducted in Plain Sight, is a pretty controversial mm -hmm. film. A lot of people know about it. But it premiered on Netflix. And um, it's a very disturbing but interesting film. And she's going to be on the documentary panel as well. Oh, that's really great. You've got, and that's just, just, I mean, I'm looking at the full rundown right here. That's just a small Yeah, we have over 30 speakers. Over 30 speakers. So let's kind of run through the day. So you've got an MC mm -hmm. who's going to kind of carry the yeah, whole Yeah, Pascal, event. who's pretty well known for his Pascal show, which is a live show he does on Facebook. Mm -hmm. So he's going to be the MC, And then you've got an opening session. And what's, what are you going to kind of cover when you have the opening session? The opening session is focused on four filmmakers who are doing things in St. Louis that have reached a national audience. So... Uh, Bobby and David are both in that panel, as well as a young man named Chris Phillips, who used to work at STL yes. TV. He's uh, <laughs> got a documentary that's going to be distributed by CNN. And then also Catherine Dudley-Rose, who did a fiction film called Parallel Chords that just had a theatrical premiere in L.A. Okay. And then you've got a breakout session. Um, what's that? That first panel, how to take your work to the next level. Yes. And I think that's a big thing is that a lot of times when I hear someone's a filmmaker, I'm like, all right, let me, let me see it. We're in the show me state, right? <laughs> right. And so I said, right. let me see your work. And a lot of folks blow me away. But then other folks is like, well, where's your audio person? Where's the sound mix? You need to get a better DP. Who's doing the lighting? And just talking about like... If we want to get our work recognized and seen by more people, we need to have a level of quality. And so we have a director of photography. We have someone who's done visual effects for Sundance uh, level films. We have an audio mixer who's produced, mm. you know, mixed a lot of films. And then we also have Brittany Janae I talked about who's an editor. Yeah. Okay, and then one that I think this is kind of a popular topic now, uh, making money with YouTube. So this is an interesting thing, right? Like if we were having this discussion like 10 years ago, 15 years ago, obviously it would be how do I get my film into a theater, right? Or seen at a festival. Now it's people putting their material on YouTube, social media. So let's talk about that breakout session. How did you come about putting that one together? We, we, you know, I think it's almost like the antithesis of the other one. Right. Like, you don't have to have that great production quality right. on YouTube. You can just throw up your phone, but if you're editing, if your content's dynamic, you can get a real follower and a subscriber base. And some people make their living from YouTube, even people locally in St. Louis. We have comp one company called Vat19 that I think has over a billion views on YouTube, and they just sell goofy products, and they make <laughs> hilarious videos out of that. And so someone from that company would be there. Uh, Jeremy Carre from mm -hmm. Cool Fire Studios. They do a lot of work for like Build-A-Bear mm -hmm. and other companies to use YouTube to actually for branding and to sell things on the back the background. They, they just won an Emmy for their Brown and Crouppen uh, TV. So there's there a, per yeah. a perfect <laughs> example. And uh, we even have a guy named Soldier Knows Best that's coming, and he just uh, reviews products. So that's but he has 800,000 subscribers or something just reviewing products that come out. And so there's lots of different ways that you can use YouTube to generate uh, an income. Mm -hmm. And so for the folks that are learning about how to make things top notch in Hollywood, it's like how to get down and dirty on yes. YouTube and make money. And so we wanted to make sure we were trying to hit as many people as possible. Obviously, there's seminars or break, breakout sessions we could also do for actors or stuff like that. But we tried to focus this year at least 
do it right and do it small and maybe it'll expand in future years. Yeah, no, this is good, this is good. Then you've got the documentary filmmaking one that you use, so that's the next session throughout the day. Mm -hmm. So uh, you mentioned some of those, I think they were all in that line. I mentioned all three did. of them and the one person who's not mentioned is uh, Bradley Rayford who was on the Four Akeem film, mm -hmm. and uh, which played at Tribeca and he's gonna be talking about some of his new work too. Okay, and then when you go the other side of documentary of filmmaking on the documentary side, then there's the fiction filmmaking yes, yes. side. So you've got like Joni Tackett here, casting director. Tell me about this uh, Yeah, session. totally. Joni Tackett, she uh, is a casting director, worked on films like Up in the Air, but she's also a head of MoMA, which does the is trying to advocate for film tax credits. So we're gonna talk about the importance of tax credits also, mm -hmm. and she'll mention that. And then uh, Mark Valenti, uh, he was a writer for Rugrats, which is, that's my favorite credit of his, but he has a lot of good credits. Uh, Wyatt Weed, he was uh, one of the Predators in the Predator 2 movies, but he also has directed a lot of other films. And then, uh, not added on the website yet, but we have secured is Martise Hill, who was a producer on the film Cronies, which played okay. at Sundance, and also on a film called uh, I don't even know if I can say the name of the film, but it's a good film, so it, it also premiered at Sundance. <laughs> Just go to the website, Yes, right? go to the website and you'll see. Um, and then we've got a breakout session on distribution and film festivals. This is kind of a key if you were really trying to get your work, not necessarily to your point seen, because you can put it on YouTube, but how to navigate the film festival world. Definitely, and I think what people don't realize is making a movie is half the battle. Getting people to watch it is the other half. Mm -hmm. And so much work uh, goes into that. And these last two panels, the distribution and the funding panel, are the ones folks have said, those are most important to me. Mm -hmm. because. Uh, we need to get our work seen. We need to figure out how to make a revenue. Film festivals are part of that, but they're not the only way. Distributors are a part of that, but now you can distribute yourself. And mm -hmm. so we're gonna talk about both you know, big level distribution, but also do it yourself distribution. We're gonna talk about the film festivals that mean something to folks like Sundance, South by Southwest, Tribeca, and the ones that are like scams, mm -hmm. and they both exist. And so we're, that's important thing we need to discuss. I wanna get into, cause we don't have that much time left in this segment, but you have this big pitch competition, which is yes. really cool and a really neat feature. And I do wanna get into that for the second segment. But before we wrap up this one, I mean, how would you describe people in terms of coming to this? I mean, these you could have four films and come to this, or you could be a student at Webster, let's say, and come to this. Who do you want to come out? We want anybody who wants to make content or work on content in uh, the Midwest area. So if you're a mom and had like, I always had this great movie idea and I never submitted it, submit it. You know, submit. Anybody is welcome. We're gonna, we're gonna look through all the pitches. If you've been doing film for a long time, you're like, I can't learn anything. You can always yes. learn something new. And I think that's, we want the most experienced folks who think they don't need it and the folks who don't even think this is for them. Yeah. It's for everybody who wants to tell powerful stories and wants to do them right here in the Midwest. Okay, all right. Well, we've got the information there for you on the screen before we cut to break. It is the In Motion Filmmaking Conference. It's coming up. November 2nd, that's Saturday. It's an all-day conference, 200 and more filmmakers, 30-plus speakers, a pitch competition, which we're going to talk about in our next segment, a happy hour, and much more. So head to the website, inmotionconference.com. All right, but don't go anywhere. Stay with us. We're going to get into the details about what the pitch competition is. There's a happy hour. And we're also going to talk to Dan about his nonprofit organization, Continuity, Continuity that he co-founded. So stay with us. We'll be right back. <laughs> Garden is loved by green thumbs and non-gardening types alike because you can play. You can relax. And there's always something new to experience, no matter the time of day or the season. And learn about conservation and one-of-a-kind plants. So come and experience St. Louis. 
Hi, I'm Sarah Thompson and welcome back to City Corner. Today I'm talking with Dan Paris. He is the director of the In Motion Filmmaking Conference. He is also a filmmaker and he's the co-founder and executive director of the nonprofit organization Continuity. We're going to get into some of that stuff later on in the show, but we're going to continue talking about the conference. And I want to kind of pick back up where we left off in the first segment, which is one of your breakout sessions or the last session of the conference is really about film funding. And I feel like this is so important because so many people want to work in film and there's so many people who are talented, but the big thing that holds it up is basically revenue is money, just money that can be made that it hasn't been made or money to do the work that they want to do. So let's talk about this film funding uh, panel and what they're going to talk about. Yeah, it's a really excellent panel. We actually have someone from Tribeca speaking and she actually does pitches herself uh, for raising money for documentaries. So she's in the grant process for Tribeca for documentaries. Her name's Caitlin. Uh, we have a representative from RAC coming and they have grants directly to artists. Most organizations give grants to nonprofits, mm -hmm. but RAC is one of the few in St. Louis that actually gives it directly to the artists, which is great for filmmakers. We have um, David Johnson, who I think raised private equity, I'm not exactly mm. sure, for the most recent film, The Ghost Who Walks, that mm -hmm. played at the Showcase and will play at St. Louis International. So he'll talk about that fundraising avenue. Okay. And then last of all, we have someone named Christina Ray, and she works at Seed and Spark, and that's through crowdfunding. They're the largest uh, filmmaking only crowdfunding source. So mm -hmm. it represents like you get money from individuals, you get money from the crowd, and you get money from grant makers. And so people can learn from each of those different ways you can raise mm -hmm. money for your film. Mm -hmm. When you think about the filmmaking community here in St. Louis, I mean, what are we talking about size wise? I mean, are there how many filmmakers are actually here in St. Louis? Well, I saw a stat from uh, MoMA, the Missouri Motion Picture Association. I'm, I'm not sure the exact. Uh, acronym or whatever, mm -hmm. but um, they said 11,000 people in Missouri work in the commercial video production industry and broadcast industries. So mm -hmm. 11,000 just in Missouri, I'm not sure the actual numbers in St. Louis, I would guess it's in the, the thousands. And um, so we only have room for 200 something. So mm -hmm. we're hoping to, hoping to sell out. What do you say to people, especially, and again, it's not to sort of demean or devalue being here in St. Louis, but clearly it's not necessarily like Hollywood or being in a place where there's a huge, huge, or even cities like Atlanta that are, um, you know, coming up more and more for production. What do you say to people if they seem like they get discouraged? What do you say to them just based on your own background as a filmmaker? Well, I shot a documentary here in St. Louis and it got they, they found us in the St. Louis International Film Festival, Fuse, and then they broadcast our film nationally. And um, it was because it was a good film, mm -hmm. you know? If you make good content, people will notice and people will come to you. Mm -hmm. And uh, it doesn't matter where you're at. I can upload my film to Amazon Prime right from my laptop sitting in my underwear at my house, right? <laughs> I mean, nothing's stopping you. There's never been so easy access to equipment. The kind of equipment we can have, I mean, you couldn't have that 10 years ago yeah. and shoot 4K from what you have. I mean, it's just incredible, the technological changes, the access changes. It's really down to your hustle and your ability. You don't have to be in New York, LA, or Atlanta anymore. You just have to do your thing and know what you're doing and tell a good story because good stories will rise to the top. Mm -hmm. And you're saying now is the time. You're saying now, and that's a really good point. I mean, I remember that there's a time where if you wanted just even to have an idea to do a short, you'd have to rent, tuck, pull out a whole plan, list your equipment, figure out how you're going to rent it for Shoot on film, long. you know, yeah. and pay for film processing. Yeah. It's not it's not necessary. Yeah, anymore. no, this is, again, this is a great segue into the pitch uh, competition. So part of the conference you're having this, is it called the pitch competition? Yeah, we're calling it the pitch, uh, pitch competition at the end, it's the end of the conference. It's kind of the cap, you know, the, <laughs> right. the, the cherry on top. And it's going to be, I think, the most exciting part of the day. Okay, so how does this work? So anyone can submit a pitch. You go, you, you get a ticket, and then you also have to buy a pitch ticket. Mm -hmm. And um, then we have a committee who's going to review all the pitches, and we're going to choose the top five. And they're going to pitch to the five uh, folks on our panels that, uh, you know, work at Tribeca, Sundance, um, have had films on national television, shows on national television. So we've got some legit folks. Many of them with connections to St. Louis, looking for people with good stories to tell. So they're gonna be interested, and uh, all five pitches will happen. You'll have about three minutes to pitch, seven minutes for Q&A, and then they'll all vote on the winner. And the winner wins all those prizes we mentioned earlier in the mm -hmm. show. And, um, and then, I don't know, we were talking about that off camera, so we might as well remind people what they, like, what they get. If you win this pitch competition, you get... Okay, you, you win uh, a year of office space at Nine Network and mentorship 
you win $500 of free gear rental from Borrow Lenses. You get a year of subscription to Hurlbut Academy, which is a uh, cinematographer's academy online where you can learn about all kinds of cool stuff. You get a free screening of your film at B&B Theaters. Mm. And then you get a VIP pass to St. Louis International Film Festival. So you can go rub some elbows, see some good films. Yeah. It's, so a, it's a lot. I mean, it's over $7,500 worth of stuff. And... Um, yeah, yeah. Just for and it's a good chance to get pitching pitching your ideas. It's tough. I mean, it's a lot of pressure, but at the same time, you need that experience if you want to kind of continue on. And the, the thing is, is that the best thing that could potentially come out of it is one of these people on the panel could really have a real opportunity yeah. for you. They could say, I like your show. I want to pitch it to this network. Let's have coffee next week. Mm -hmm. And that's, for us, is going to be a success mm -hmm. if something actually comes out of this. And I think it's very possible. And we have to say, too, that after the pitch competition, the evening of the, day of the conference ends with a happy hour. And this is really for people to network, too. This is, this is going to be networking. We're all going to have badges, talk about what we do and what we want to do and that kind of thing. And uh, it is a cash bar, so that's not included in your ticket. That's mm -hmm. the only thing not included in your ticket. Like parking is, lunch, breakfast, all that is included in the okay. ticket. But happy hour is cash bar. But it's going to hopefully be a great networking event. They have a really beautiful bar down there. And hopefully the conversations will continue. We're also doing a lot of networking during lunch. We've decided okay. not to have a lunch speaker and just to have some intentional networking where people can connect and yes. find the people and the resources they need um, in that moment. Because... You know, you don't want to listen to people talk so much. You want to talk a little bit yourself, right? <laughs> right? Yeah. No, I think this is a really great idea. And to kind of bring it back to when I opened up the show with this diversity question, for people to know, you have for a long time, and Continuity has the organization, um, really championed diversity in filmmaking and in production. And so what's interesting about this is this: the proceeds from this conference go to Continuity. All, yeah, all the proceeds. And I think what you've done in the process, too, is really then taken the mission and the programs that you're doing through Continuity. And now people are know, know about it because of this conference that's coming up. So let's talk about continuity. We've got some graphics. We've got your logo. And I know cool. you've been here before to talk about it. But remind people what it is that you do and why it was started. So uh, continuity's mission is to expand diversity in media production through skills-based training, mentorship, and opportunities for untapped talent. And so what that looks like tangibly is we, our main program is we have a 36-week training program for adults who want to break into the film industry. And they take class one night a week from 6 to 9 p.m. They're taught by industry professionals. And then they make a number of projects throughout the, the entire class. And then uh, we have a premiere at the end of the program. And it's a completely free program for folks if they qualify. Uh, we usually have about 75 to 100 people apply every year. Oh. And we choose 10. So it's a very selective program. And two thirds of our graduates have gotten into the St. Louis Filmmaker Showcase, their films. And then 100% of our graduates have gotten new opportunities in the industry, whether that's starting their own business, getting new clients, getting jobs, internships everybody has found some new opportunity through the program. And that's really what, how we measure success and how we've seen success. Mm -hmm. And so the nonprofit started really, uh, my co-founder and I, Kyle, we used to teach at uh, St. Louis Public Schools to high school students. And we did a video after school program. And then when that, that program kind of shut down, we said, well, we really enjoyed that, but you know, we want to keep, keep doing that. But we got together some community members and we said, well, there's a lot of programs aimed at youth what about adults who want to break into mm -hmm. the industry? What about people who really want to create a revenue and, uh, from this industry? And so it became more of a workforce development organization as well as a training organization. Mm -hmm. And so through just community dialogue with other community members and, and growing our board, we've kind of focused in on our mission and mm -hmm. grown that. And now the conference is just one new thing we do, and we're hoping to eventually do more. And um, we're, we're currently growing our board. We're looking for partners to, to really develop the strategic vision for what's, what it's going to be in the years to come. Mm -hmm. I was reading an article, and it was saying, that we've got to stop thinking about diversity as like a checklist, you know, but a really a, a way of thinking, a way of being, and in the way that we approach things in, in all industries, but specifically yeah. too in the filmmaking industry. And so talk about that. I mean, you're kind of doing, you're, you're really sort of going through this, pushing the way, um, but how has that been received then by other production companies and filmmaking filmmakers? Uh, are people getting on board? Are they getting it? Are they getting the real long-term goal and the benefit of all of this? That's a great question. I, th I think... I think diversity is tough. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it really is tough. Like you think about someone who has completely opposite views from you or experience mm -hmm. from you and you're engaging with them in an intimate way. Like true diversity is, is difficult and it takes time mm -hmm. and we don't really have much time in our world. Mm -hmm. And so I think um, the time to talk about diversity hasn't been like we hoped and some of the potential mm -hmm. people we thought would partner. Uh, we've had some, some good starts to conversations, but we're hoping that that conversation continues and we're hoping just in our own small way that this organization can have a positive impact on just diversity as a whole um, and talking about the importance of that. And I think 
I think it's kind of a scary word for people, mm -hmm. but true diversity, when you connect with someone, either from a different background or different race, different gender, whatever, different history, there's something beautiful that happens from that. And um, that, that's what I really love about it. And I think one of the best ways to do that is to serve or work alongside yeah. people, like on a set, yes. where you're like working 12 or 14 <laughs> hours a day and building relationships there. Like true diversity, a lot of times, like real connection comes through a little sweat and tears and hard work together, mm -hmm. you know? No, I love what you're doing because on the one end, it's giving experience because a lot of times you hear this where people are saying, well, I need someone with experience, right? Because there's only so many people who can do certain jobs in production and you need that experience, but then the challenge becomes who is able to get that experience? And I think all of us know from even in this industry on the TV side that it's unpaid internships often. It's really about programs when you're in college or graduate school to go through or filmmaking school. So I think you're really, uh, you're really uh, hitting home with that. I mean, where do you see this going then in the next? I mean, you've made some really, really great inroads, and I know local stations have partnered with you, working with you. Um, but where do you where do you see this going in the next, like with continuity in the next five, ten years, or even beyond? Yeah, I, th I think you know we actually had a board meeting the other night, and some <laughs> board members like we need impact more students. Others are we need more programs. Or others we need to t you know refocus our target audience and that kind of thing. And I think we're actually in a really interesting place where we're figuring out our next steps. Mm -hmm. Our mission is very clear about expanding diversity and through mm -hmm. those, those different models, but like what that looks like practically and what our programs might expand to, I think we're in the, in the process of figuring that out. And so we're, we're open to conversations with other yeah. folks that have good ideas and we're really, with this like conference and with our nonprofit, we're interested to collaborate. Like yes. we're not trying to like become the experts on that. We're trying just to like figure out what's going on and just be a part of the, you know, smart part of the the overall collective yeah. impact there. Yeah, because I think it's interesting in the filmmaking world and in production, on the one hand, it's the the product that you're doing, which is telling stories, you know, um, has this very like open feel to it, right? Because we all relate to certain stories and there's diversity in that. And that's been hard to even get that. But then behind the scenes, sometimes it's yeah. not matched. And so it gives off the impression that it is a field that has a lot of diversity. And as to your point, that can sometimes be, unfortunately, a scary word for people, but it's matching that on both sides so that the people who are enjoying the end product can also be matched in the whole process of that. And I think the, it's, a, it's a privileged industry. I mean, like you said, they expect people to work for free for long hours for a long time. And not everybody has, we have systemic issues that prevent some people from being able to just take a free labor. You know, so they're going to miss out on opportunities that someone else might have. And I think those, uh, making our program free, and we actually give a stipend. So if you finish the program, you get enough money to oh. buy the camera we use in the program. Oh, fantastic. And so that's something that's part of our, our mission and our goal, and we're trying to, to address those in small ways, you know. Mm -hmm. Dan, thank you so much. It's great to see you. It's yeah, been some time, so thank you for coming in and talking about continuity just now, but also the conference coming up. And for those of you at home, check it out. It's coming up. It's November 2nd. Uh, go visit the website. Oh, this is continuity site, so let me get here. So continuity is the nonprofit organization that Dan co-founded. You can head to their website, continuitystl.com. Follow them on all their social handles, social platforms, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. And then there's the conference that we've been talking about, and that's coming up. It's the In Motion Filmmaking Conference on Saturday, November 2nd. It's an all-day conference with more than 200 filmmakers, more than 30 speakers, the pitch competition, happy hour, and much more. For details, go to inmotionconference.com. Even if you can't go, be sure to head to their website so you can just see who's on the panel and find a way to sort of get involved in this um, if you're interested in filmmaking and production. Thank you again, Dan, for being here. And thank you at home for watching. And keep it right here on STL TV, Experience St. Louis. Thank you.